in the first chapter of the book of the Revelation, we're dealing with amazing reality. And we, we felt like that that was a kind of a, a foundation uh, situation, you know, uh, that we... Uh, that we deal with the reality. We deal with the reality of God, the, uh, the Father. We deal with the reality of God, the Son. We deal with the reality of God, the Holy Ghost. We deal with the reality of heaven. We deal with the reality of hell. Uh, it is a book of reality. Uh, and uh, not mysticism. We are dealing with a book of reality. And we want it to become exceptionally, gloriously real in your own life. And in the middle of the page, uh, number number seven, you find those realities that we were just talking about there. And uh, it is also, as you'll see at the bottom of that page, uh, the, the book of the Revelation uh, is a book of final conclusions. Now, c conclusions are very interesting in that your life, uh, <laughs> what you may be in the beginning or the middle, does not fully determine what will be in the end because sometimes we can be unconverted and, and not know the Lord and so forth uh, and then toward the end of our life we become a dedicated person to God and so we have a spiritual revolution that takes place within us and we are a new person in Christ Jesus uh, but the final conclusion of your life is the important one make it to heaven and uh, don't take chances on it there are millions of people in hell at this moment that, that thought they were going to go to heaven, but they never made the decision. You know, next time, next time, next time, next sermon, yeah, next Sunday. And, and those, those points in time pass, and we always say, another time, another time. And so there are millions in hell that are no worse than a lot of other people, but they're there because they refuse their final opportunity. They missed the finality. Uh, they, they, the clock ran out, the red light was on, and they missed the thing. And so we, we, we tell everybody, for God's sake, things that are important, do them in advance, you know. Now, my wife and I made out wills. You'll be surprised. That was 25 years ago. You say, why? I don't think making out a will means you're going to die. A lot of stupid people do. They're afraid to make out a will. They, they think it's a death warrant. And it might be a life warrant, you know. I, I, I have a friend that I, I called his name, all of you know. Uh, his father, that I was very well acquainted with, uh, just wanted to hold on to that money as long as he lived on planet Earth. And he did hold on to it, except that when he died, they had to sell their property to pay the taxes. $750,000 worth of taxes they had to pay. They would have had to pay nothing if before he died, he had made out his will and gave it to them. You have this, you have that. Now you look in the Bible, that's exactly what Abraham did. The Bible says he called in all of his children. Now, after Pearl Sarah died, uh, uh, he, he, he married again. Just a boy, you know, about about a uh, uh, hundred and fifty years old, and has six kids, you know. By this, you'd call her the third woman, I suppose now. And but before he died, at a hundred and seventy-five, he gave everybody their portion. And not only that, he said, "You go over there, and you go over there, and you go over there." And he designated them a place to live so they wouldn't be fighting over his tent. Are you here? Well, most of you hadn't done it. Right in this city, I had one of the, the largest undertakers to say uh, that 90% of all the people that he has to bury, their will was not valid or they hadn't made one out at all. And all you can expect after that are the quarrelings and fightings of a family. So whatever business you got to do, don't wait till the last moment to do it. Do it. Boy, you're quiet. Ooh. That must have been scary for you. Don't be afraid to do the things that are the right thing to do. Can you say amen? amen. But do them away in advance. I'm an advanced man. I don't ever wait for deadlines. I don't believe in deadlines. 
Most people live on a deadline. But I refuse to be close to one. If there's something to be done, I do it in advance so I don't get under any pressure. I like to do things without pressure. And all the people said. And so we find here that the book of Revelation is also a book of final conclusions. What are they? It, number one, the conclusion of evil. That's in Revelation chapter 20 and verse 14. The conclusion of evil. Wouldn't that be wonderful? That endemic blood of rebellion that was born in Adam's heart will finally be completed and finalized and gone from off of this planet Earth and everywhere else. And then the finalization and the conclusion of death. And death and hell should be cast into the lake of fire. Now, I, I guess you'd want to look at that. Hell is a place right now uh, where the ungodly are. But death is a monster, evidently, because they're going to put death in hell or in the lake of fire. I mean, it's kind of frightening to, you know, to, to think of death being a personality. It says uh, they are going to be put into the lake of fire. So therefore, it's a reality. That's what this ch whole chapter is about. Uh, death and hell, uh, th there will be no more death. And there will be no more hell as far as occupants are concerned. It will be a, final, a finalizing of the situation. So we have the conclusion of the devil. That's, that's in the Revelation chapter 20 and, uh, and verse 10. That the devil will be cast into the lake of fire forever and ever. And that's it. It's all finished. The conclusion is there. He will never tempt again. He'll never cause people to lie anymore. Uh, all of his activities will be concluded. How many be glad for that? Whew. Am I ever glad for that? There'll be a conclusion of transgression. And that's in Revelation 20 and 13. That there will be no more transgression. No more fighting against God. No more spirit of rebelling. Wanting to do the opposite of what God would have them to do. There'll be an, a conclusion of the abominations and falsehood. Lies. Uh, that's, that's in Revelation 21 and 27. And there shall be no, no, and no wise enter into it, uh, that it may bring that, that defileth, uh, neither whatsoever worketh abomination, or that worketh a lie. And so that falsehood business will be concluded. You say, why? We'll be able to see right straight through each other in heaven. Are you here? So there'll be no, no need of telling a lie uh, because he's looking right straight through you. Everybody will be able to look through each other and see the purity that's there because there will only be purity there. And, and so how beautiful it will be. Then we'll have the, uh, the, the conclusion of separation. Him that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go no more out, and I will write upon him uh, the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, uh, which is the new Jerusalem, uh, which cometh down out of heaven from God, and I will write upon him, upon him my new name. And so uh, you get some new things coming. Conclusion of some old ones. And, and, uh, and the beautiful new, new ones that we, that we will have. And then uh, you have the conclusion of sadness and tears. I like that one. That's Re Revelation 21 and 4. And God, the mighty one, will wipe away all tears from their eyes. And there shall be no more death, no more sorrow, no more weeping or crying, and neither Shall there be any more? Boy, that's a good one, isn't it? How many hate pain is in your hand? Woo! Uh, when you don't know what to do with it, and nobody else knows what to do with it, and you don't know where to put it, thank God one day they won't ever. The Bible says, say the Bible says, there will be no more pain. There will be no more hurt. You will never hurt your finger nor your toe. And all the middles of between. Uh, you're, you're, that's all going to be gone. For the former things are passed away. Then, then we will have the conclusion of time. Uh, 
Uh, I've preached on that a lot of times here, but I hope you uh, come to understand it. In the Revelation chapter 10, verse 6, And swear by him that liveth forever and ever, uh, who created the heavens and the things which are therein, and the earth, and the things that are that are therein, and the sea, and the things that, which are therein. And there shall be time. You say, what is time? Time is a period, uh, a, a, a moment of energy uh, in the spectrum of eternity. And, and so uh, there won't be any more of that. We won't count days or we won't count months. You ladies on a special like that, you just hate telling people your age. So there'll be no more calculations of age at all. Uh, time will be no more. Time will not be a problem anymore. Yesterday and today and tomorrow will all become like him, like Jesus, in our eternal state, and there will be no more. If you're glad for it, say amen. I'm happy for it. So that's trying to lay the basis of showing you the reality of the book of Revelation, that it's something real, it's something to study, it's something to look into, it's something for you to know about, and for God's sake, I don't go along reading fiction and don't go along reading junk and looking at pornographic, uh, reading pornographic literature and don't spend a lot of time with magazines and newspapers. Give God a little time. There's that word time coming up again. In eternity, we'll say give God our energy because we will be living in our eternal, eternal habitations at that time. All right, number two is in the middle of the page there, number eight. It says, Genesis is the beginning of man, but Revelation is the conclusion. And, and the books in between are related to both sides or both ends. So it don't matter where you read in the Word of God, it's possibly pointing both directions, from Adam down to Antichrist. And, and so you've got... Uh, both of them functioning at the same time. In Genesis, man began by walking with God, and, and then he, Adam heard the voice of God uh, walking in the garden and the cool of the day, and, and Adam and, and his wife hid themselves because they had ascended against God. Every sin uh, pr produces uh, uh, its own results, and it begins in the book of Genesis. I studied that one time. Well, I have a book on Genesis. You ought to read it. It's it, the beginning of everything. You would be amazed. You say, why did you write a book on Genesis? Well, the Lord spoke to me one day in prayer and said, did you know that half of the total history of mankind is in one little book? And I said, no, I'd like to buy that book. He says, you already got one. He says, it's called Genesis. Did you know that 3,000 years in that one book? 3,000 years of time in that one book of Genesis. Well, that's half, that's half of the total story of man. He's only going to be on this earth for 6,000 years. So that's half of his total story is in one book. And that book of Genesis and that book of Revelation, they tie together at the beginning and the end of what we call time here on the face of this earth. So every sin uh, that, that is prevalent today, what is found in Genesis. And you, you, you'll find that in the book. You ought to read that little book. And in Revelation, uh, man is with God at the throne, uh, with Christ, uh, living forever. That's in Revelation chapter 3 and verse, verse 21. And so the, the word Revelation in Greek is a poly, a, a apocalyptus. And it, it means to unveil, to uncover, uh, uh, the, the lifting up of a curtain. Uh, Revelation wants to show you uh, exactly what both sides of the Bible, the Old Testament and the New Testament, uh, that they made. So, as I said in the, my first words in this class, the book of Revelation is a book of reality, of making things become real, of making things to where you can come complete your knowledge of them and so forth. And so it is maybe the most exciting book that we have. The purpose of the book of the Revelation, and it was, as we have already stated, is to unveil Christ. 
the book of the Revelation, the name of it is the Revelation of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so it's the unveiling, the showing. In Matthew, you, you see him as a baby and as a, as a sacrificial lamb. But in the book of the Revelation, he's King of kings and Lord of lords, creator of heaven and earth. Uh, and, and you have to balance those two there, that he came here to get you, and in order to get you and to make you a child of God, a son and a daughter of God, that this is the thing he had to pay. He had to pay the debt for your sin, and so he did it. That's all finished and completed. In the book of the Revelation, he shows you who he was before he ever came to this earth. He shows you how grand and glorious it is right now and how it will be for all of eternity. But he will have a, a good, a, a good uh, uh, relationship with you and me. The bride of Christ will, throughout eternity, have a very res special relationship with Christ. And, and so we're looking forward to it. And all the people said, okay. Uh, in, in, in the book of the Revelation here, we want you to see the true Christ, the true self person, uh, the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, to, to reveal Christ as Lord of the total universe, uh, he was revealed as the Lamb of God, the, 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 the one that nobody wanted and nobody liked. Judas sold him for a price of a slave. The others deserted him and cursed and so forth. But, brother, you're going to see another picture. And I think it's going to be pretty soon. <laughs> yes, sir. I believe, I believe the, the, the completion of the book of Revelation is upon us. And that we are not just talking about what's going to be our way in the future. We are now talking about what is in the immediate, immediate times. Uh, can you say amen? Uh, Christ is described, as I said, uh, that he is our mediator, he is our judge, and also he is our high priest, and also he is our king. Uh, <laughs> what, a, what a wonderful relationship we have with the Savior of the whole world, in Jesus' name. The date of the book of the Revelation, it was written about 96, and... and, and uh, about that would be on about 60 years after the church was born. And uh, the place of the writing in the book of Revelation was a little barren island called Patmos. It is a small, desolate, rocky island in the Aegean Sea, uh, just off the coast of Turkey or off the coast of what's Ephesus. I haven't been out there, but I have been in, I have been in Ephesus and I've been to all the seven churches that are mentioned in the Bible because they're all in Turkey. It was called Asia at that time. And uh, uh, I, I hate to tell you this, but there are hardly no Christians at all in any of those places that are called the seven churches of the book of the Revelation. I mean, geographically. I, I've been there and I asked one man. Uh, we were in a tourist car uh, looking over the country and I, I had him to stop and I called a man over. I said, do you speak English? He said, yes. I said, this is the city called Philadelphia? And he said, yes. Uh, I said, how many Christians you have here? And he grinned from ear to ear. He said, only Muslims live here. There is not one single Christian here. And so we, we lost those areas, uh, not because God wanted us to lose them, but because we didn't stay in there. If you don't get people saved, you're going to have a worse condition than you had before. Are you here? The, the, the children that didn't get saved 15 years ago are causing trouble today in the face of the earth here. So we have a responsibility. To tell you the truth, the home is the creator of the next, of the next generation. So you don't want to start fighting the kids for being bad. You ought to spank their parents. Are you here? Yeah, I'm hard-boiled. You know that. The parents ought to go to jail with their kids. If your kids commit terrible things, they ought to put you in jail and let you sit there and think about it. The things you didn't do. You know, the things you didn't say. The times you did not discipline, you see. We've got something besides human rights on this earth. We've got human responsibilities. And there's no need of hiding yourself in a corner one day you're going to report to a great judge, and his name is Jesus Christ, and you're going to come to account for what you ought to have been, 
should have been. And all the people said, all right. And now, in your number six here, I, I love it very much. John, who is called the beloved one in the Bible, he is the writer of this book. The Holy Ghost is the author. And he wrote it down through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. The visions, the visions, and, and all the, so the truths recorded in this book were revealed uh, while he was praying. He was on the Isle of Patmos. He had, he had been ostracized. Uh, he had been deported to a, I guess he was such a power uh, until they just couldn't stand him. And imagine taking an old man like that, <laughs> an old man like that, and, and, and putting him on an island uh, by himself. And rather than grumbling about it, he opened his eyes and began to see angels. That's not bad, you know. <laughs> uh, that's not bad. But he, he, he was exiled on this island that is, that is called uh, Patmos. And in the kingdom and the patience of Jesus Christ was in the isle that is called Patmos for the word of God. You ought to underline that. Some people get persecuted for stupidity. And you can't really blame God for that. And all the people said, John was a very old person, but his mind was clear. His heart was clear. And he wrote down the things that God told him to. And so the book of the Revelation is on schedule. It's on schedule right now. It, it, it is being, at this moment, revealed more and more to the world that we live in. Uh, the scope of the book of the, Re of, of the Revelation, he says, write the things that you have seen, that's, that was in his day, and the things which are, that was in his day, and the things which shall be hereafter. So he was writing current history, and at the same time he was writing prophecy for the churches are way out in front, even, even under this day. And so, uh, if you turn your page there to number, uh, page number 10, it says the object of the book, the name expresses its objective, uh, that we are to show you the revelation, the revealing of the Lord Jesus Christ. And, and so, uh, Genesis means beginnings. The word Exodus means going forth. The gospel means good news. And this book is not primarily a prediction of the end of the ungodly, but rather a revelation of Jesus Christ. And we ought to remember that. Uh, yes, the judgments are in there, but that's not the primary thing. The primary thing, if you, every page, just at the top of the page, right? revealing Jesus Christ. And, and just let that thing stick there. The book of the Revelation is to show us the ultimate end of the Lord Jesus Christ. And all the people said, um, in the book of Revelation, chapter 1, verse 3, it says, Blessed is he that readeth the book. Yeah, if you don't read it, you don't get blessed, you see. And, and, and they that hear the words. If you can't read, you can hear, you can listen. And they hear the words of the prophecy. And then number three, that he will keep those things which are written therein for the time is at hand. Now that's the, that's the, uh, the, the call of God for all of our lives in Jesus' name. So we hope that the book of Revelation as we proceed uh, will simply bless us all in Jesus' name. We will be beginning in our next lesson with the seven churches of the book of the Revelation. We'll be telling you so many things about them till you will be surely, because they do represent the spiritual condition of the world right now. All the things that were in those seven churches in, in John's day is also in the church today. Uh, and so it's going to be a magnificent uh, revealing, a showing forth of what God was and what God is and what God is going to be. And I'm ready for it. How about you? I believe that Jesus Christ is coming soon. I mean, way down inside of me, I believe that Jesus Christ is coming soon. I want to be ready when he comes. I want my spirit to be ready. I want my forgiveness pattern to be right. If you're going to hold grudges against people, you may not be ready when the Lord comes. Get that out. You say, but I've been mistreated. Well, maybe, maybe so. Maybe you have, not only that, but maybe you have mistreated someone. 
If you know about it and you find out about it, ask forgiveness. It's very easy for me to ask forgiveness. Uh, any of those people around me, when I'm wrong, I just say I'm wrong. Uh, because any time you set yourself up, you know, to say uh, that, that you, know, you know that you're right, at that moment, you're wrong in saying you're right. Uh, so the best thing to do is to have a sweet spirit inside, a spirit like Jesus. He loved Peter after he cussed and would have saved Judas if he knelt down and asked forgiveness. He's a great forgiving Savior. And all the people said...